What's up? I'm Scratch Bassett and welcome to Scratch School. Today, I'm going to talk about slip mats. Now, what is a slip mat? A slip mat is a piece of fabric that gets put between a record and the turntable that allows the record to slip a bit and keep the turntable moving at its steady pace so that it doesn't cause the turntable to stop or the sorry, the platter to stop or slow down. We don't want this because every platter once it stops takes a while to get started and this can mess you up on, on mixes or on scratches and give you an undesired sound. So we want to stay away from the platter slowing down from whatever pitch you have it at. The first thing you get when you buy a turntable is typically, well Technics 1200 or something like that, a rubber mat that's made for insulating vibrations when you're playing records. These rubber mats aren't actually slip mats. They're just mats to put between the record and the platter. So when you try to put resistance on top of them, it actually basically stops the platter. So if you're scratching or mixing, you really want to get these out, especially because there may be resistance between the mat and the record underneath, which could be causing marks on the bottom of your record. And what happens if you want to play the B side? What you're going to want to do when you get one of those with the turntable is just immediately throw it out. It's not for DJing, it's a piece of crap. You want to get a real slip mat under your record. So let's check out some real things that's going on. For the sake of this demonstration, let me explain this light. This light is a strobe light. It's actually flashing at a rate that when the turntable is playing at 33 and a third RPMs or 45 RPMs and it's hitting all of these dimples on the turntable platter, if it's playing at zero or a perfect, perfect pitch, the middle light will stay, or the, the larger dimple will stay still. Kind of cool, right? For reference, the bottom dimple is actually when it's playing at minus 30, minus 3.3 percent when it's, when it's still. As you can see when you change the pitch. And then the third one up is at plus 3.3 and the fourth one up is at plus 7.2. Now this isn't really information that you use in your day-to-day -day DJing, but it's still kind of cool. And it'll actually help us see in this demonstration which mats are creating less resistance. The most common type of slip mat that we see are felt slip mats. Now they can be in varied thicknesses and sometimes have logos or pictures on them, but a felt slip mat does the trick. A felt slip mat will cause minimal resistance between the turntable and the record and generally, generally speaking get the job done. You want to make sure it's not too thick. Now some slip mats are thicker to absorb vibration, but for, for mixing and scratching, we want to make sure that it's not too thick, because the thicker can be, the more resistance and, and weight it has, and it can actually slow your, your record down. So I actually think this one here is probably like a little bit too thick. I'm not sure if you can see that. That's a bit too thick for me. These slip mats allow the platter to move at a constant speed. And as you can see with this strobe light, it's actually only slowing it down minus 3.3 percent when those are still. That's pretty good. That's not very much resistance at all. It picks up at a constant speed when I let the mat go. But it's still a bit thick. I got a, got a little bit of a thinner one here. I, 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 li I like my slip mats to be be a little bit thin just, just so they're causing the least amount of resistance possible and you can get your record started as quickly as you need them to. Once we've found a slip mat that's the, the thickness desired, like pretty thin, um, we want to make sure that it's still stiff and still maintains a shape because if it's a bit too uh, wiggly like a piece of fabric on, on a t-shirt or something, I find that it does have the, the possibility to create some almost like suction qualities or maybe just slowing the, it, it slows down with a drag. If it's got a little bit of stiffness to it, it's going to slide a bit better underneath the record. So I would say this is probably my favorite slip mat here. It's pretty, th pretty thin. Favorite for felt. I think I've had that one for like 10 years. <clears throat> now, you don't want it to be too stiff. There are some, some slip mats that, honestly, I think you could fold in half. Like this one here is just it's very, very robust. And the problem with this one is 
sometimes it, it's, it's, it's almost stiff and, and can create bounces underneath the record and, and, and vibrations or, 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 you know, skips on your needle because it's so stiff that it, 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 it forces itself to lift the record. You want to be careful about these ones that are very stiff. It's got to be, while, it, while you don't want it to be wavy like a piece of cotton, you want it to be uh, uh, loose enough that it's not bouncing back and causing skips on the needle. Now, in addition to a felt slip mat, sometimes you can add a piece of plastic underneath. Now they actually sell these um, that are specifically for records, but if you put this underneath a piece of felt, it actually helps the felt to slide and, and, and make it a little bit slicker for slip mat use. Now the piece of plastic can really help with some felts to, to help them slide a bit better because plastic tends to have a, be a bit more slippery than, than a fabric. But you do want to be careful of the added noise that can sometimes get transferred up to the needle. As you can hear, the plastic is a little bit louder than felt. Now this isn't a problem sometimes with digital vinyl systems and that sort of thing, but you want to be careful when playing wax that you might be picking up a bit of that sort of windy sort of shh sound that could be transferred to the needle. Let's see if we can hear that. Now with this method, you kind of need two slip mats, a piece of plastic and a piece of fabric. Some slip mat companies now have started making slip mats that actually have uh, two different surfaces, a felty surface on top and a plasticky sort of surface on the bottom. The company Butter Rugs makes a really thin slip mat that has some sort of synthetic uh, material on top and then like a polyester underneath it. It's very good for sliding. These, these I find work great. They create almost zero resistance. My only problem with these is that they're a little bit too thin. They're almost paper thin. And sometimes at clubs and everything, that doesn't give you enough uh, absorption of, of, of sounds and, and vibration. Uh, and and, and it, you, you can be really susceptible to skips like that. And sometimes when slip mats are this thin, they come off with the record when you change records. But for strictly for hand control on, on a platter, it's, uh, it's, a great, it's a great slip mat, butter rugs. Similar to the butter rugs, but a bit more thicker, are Dr. Suzuki slip mats from Stokio. These have, this, it's, it's kind of a polyester, similar polyester, but a bit more durable. And, and the felt is a bit thicker on top. It's actually a felt and not sort of like a synthetic material. I find these to be great. Shouts out to Red Bull 3 Style for providing these slip mats. And I find these to be a good balance of slipping and absorption. Feels really nice. And you don't hear any of that whirring, windy sound that you hear when you have that piece of plastic sliding underneath the record. Now similar to the Dr. Suzuki slip mats are these slip mats from Peru. Kingdom Element, kingdomelement.com. They actually made me my own slip mats when I went down there, so shouts out. These are actually a little bit more flexible than the Dr. Suzuki, and I find that the, the fabric that they use is a little, even a little better still. Very similar, very comparable, I'd say, but even a little bit nicer, in my opinion. And you gotta admit, they look good. And those are the different types of slip mats that I've had in my studio over the years. Remember that all of them work, but some work a little bit better than others. If you're not going to be scratching like crazy with records, maybe you don't need the most high-tech one. Maybe you can afford a cheaper one or even cut out your own felt slip mat. Another thing we want to make sure is that the slip mats will help us with our back spinning. Because in juggling, it can be really important that your record gets back quick enough and doesn't have much resisting it from spinning backwards to that beat we're trying to catch earlier in the record. But if you're looking for something that works best with scratching, you're going to want to look at something like the Butter Rugs, the Dr. S Dr. Suzuki Stokyo mats, or the Kingdom Element slip mats. This is Scratch Bassin signing off for Scratch School. Why don't you let us know what slip mats work best for you? Let's have a discussion. Catch you later. Scratch Bastard.